Hello there. People always ask if that is a Star Wars reference, and to answer it, yes, yes it is. Hello there. Now, to address the elephant in the room, which is an elephant that I suppose that I am personally creating, I'm wearing something slightly different than what I usually wear, and there's some information to that. This is a merch design that I am releasing very, very soon. It's been in the works for a while, and I'm very excited about it. You have, of course, the beautiful, like, stippled tulip design on the pocket area. You have these beautiful coffee plants running down both the sleeves, and you also have the, uh, pardon me, MDC logo on the back. So that's kind of fun. These are gonna be in unisex sizes. They come in a long sleeve t-shirt. They come in a hoodie. They also come in a cropped hoodie. Again, if you want even more information, more photos, any of that, it will be down in the description below. The topic that we've talked about a lot on this channel and a topic that honestly a lot of coffee channels talk about because it's a very, very broad subject is how to make cafe grade drinks at home. Now, whether you are looking to ultimately save money in the long run, or perhaps you honestly just want to develop your barista skills at home, it's a really interesting space. You have all these different machines and tools and just paraphernalia that you can purchase to deck out your house in the way that a cafe might. Now, unfortunately, those things all come with a price point. And when it comes to espresso or espresso machines, that price point is pretty frequently like very high. It's a pretty unattainable price point for a lot of people, which is why we talk about more affordable ways to do all those things that an espresso machine does at a lesser cost. I'm sure a lot of you know this, but just to review real fast, there are two main things that an espresso machine does. The first one is Poles Espresso, that is in the name, very clear. The second thing it does is also steam milk. Generally, espresso machines will have a steam wand attached that creates hot steam that you will then infuse into your milk, creating this lovely, warm, like foamy, frothy deliciousness that you can then pour into your espresso to get a latte or a cappuccino or, or whatever you want. We've covered a lot of things and tools and topics around one half of an espresso machine. We've we've talked about the espresso half a good amount. Whether you're using some sort of like portable handheld tool to make espresso, or maybe you're using like a mocha pod, or maybe you have an AeroPress recipe that's a little bit more condensed, so you're getting something espresso-like. There, there's a ton of ways to more affordably achieve espresso. The milk steaming part though, a little trickier. You've probably seen something like this mentioned when talking about the milk steaming side of an espresso machine. This is a handheld milk frother and they're, they're very common. There are all sorts of models and brands, but they all generally do the exact same thing. You have this spoolie bit on the end that spins really, really fast so that when you put it in your milk, you begin to pull air into that milk, creating that very similar frothy, foamy, like microfoam texture. They're usually battery powered. They're usually very cheap and they usually do an okay job job. Like anything, honestly, you just have to practice and know how to use one. However, this doesn't do the entirety of what a steam wand would do. This only does one half of it because a steam wand, which is one half of an espresso machine, can be even more broken down into two separate functions. It froths the milk, so it incorporates air into the milk, but it also heats the milk. And that's something that this cannot do. No version really of a hand frother can also heat the milk because the heat that is being incorporated into the milk is coming from that steam, that hot steam that you're then pushing into the milk. But today we're gonna look at something that it heats the milk and it froths the milk. And I think it's pretty cool. So let me go grab it. This right here is the Bellmen Stovetop Steam Maker. It retails at about just over $100, so it is definitely quite a bit more expensive than any hand froth you're gonna get. But that being said, it is still significantly less than any sort of espresso machine you're gonna get. And this is what he looks like. You gotta admit, this is a pretty cute little thing. Just so we're all on the same page, this does not have anything to do with coffee brewing or espresso brewing. This is solely to do with steaming milk. But it does act kind of similarly to a mocha pot. Now, once you unscrew the top, inside you have this open chamber that you're gonna fill up about halfway with water. Then you simply set it on top of your stovetop, you screw it all back together, and you let it rise to a temperature where steam is beginning to be created. Now, we don't have a puck of coffee in here like we would a mocha pot, so instead all that steam is building up to be released through the uh, little steam wand right here, which may look very familiar to what you would see on a standard espresso machine. Seems pretty easy, right? And yeah, I think we're gonna have a very nice time, and at the end of it, we should have a pretty nice latte. So I'm gonna go get this ready, get this on the stove, and while I do that, I wanna give a huge thank you to today's sponsor. I wanna give a huge thank you to Vessi for partnering with me on today's video. I've been wearing Vessi's for a while now, and they've fast become some of my favorite shoes to wear anywhere from work to my everyday. I wear their weekend model a lot, but they recently released their everyday move, and it quickly became my go-to, with added support for extra comfort and a sportier look. 
And since I live in Oregon, which is, if you haven't heard, quite the rainy state in the winter, I have to talk about one of my all-time favorite features of the shoe, which is that these Vessies are 100% waterproof and made from a lightweight Dymatex knit material, meaning that when mistakes, spills, or more often than not puddles happen, my feet stay dry. This makes them both the perfect barista shoe and the perfect everyday rainy weather shoe. And their herringbone tread pattern helps them be extra grippy and safe even when I'm slipping around the cafe or outdoors. So if you want to match with me and get your own pair of Vessies for yourself or even for a loved one on this holiday season, I gotcha. Because Vessie is giving my subscribers $25 off your purchase when you click the link below and enter code MDC. Thank you again to Vessie for making today's video possible. Welcome back and welcome to the, the stovetop angle. Now I've done a couple things in the meantime since we last chatted with each other. The first being that I put water in our steam maker. Inside of this steam maker, there are a couple different valves that you don't wanna fill the water line past. In general, you'll wanna fill it about two thirds full. We've also set our steam maker on the stovetop and I have it at kind of like a medium high heat. It needs to build heat and pressure and steam and all those things and generally that's gonna take around five minutes. So that has already started heating. We are waiting for it to get to steam temperatures. And the last thing I've done is also get us some espresso. Because as I mentioned before, this thing has nothing to do with coffee brewing or espresso. This is simply a steam milk machine. I feel like I would listen to that band if that were a band. <laughs> Regardless though, we do have some espresso ready. It will have to sit for a minute while we wait for our steam maker to continue heating. That is completely fine. And, and if you have any concerns about that, I made a video about that two videos ago actually. So feel free to check that out. Oh, one other thing I did is I also got myself a pitch of nice whole milk. I have about six ounces of it here. I have prepped this exactly like I would if I was using a more traditional steam wand. I don't think you can hear it, but there is starting to be some like water boiling, whistling sounds happening behind me, which means our steam wand is just about ready to use. So let's go to the other angle. After that, submerge it in, open it up. Now I'm having a little bit of a whirlpool here. I have submerged my tip completely underneath and I'm waiting for it to reach the ideal temperature. I'm about happy with that clean off the tip. I'm gonna polish my milk by spinning it a tiny bit and then also transferring it into a new pitcher. Tap it a couple times if you need to. There you go, that is a pretty beautiful pour. Now, if we look a little bit closer, you'll see for the most part, we have a very smooth texture to our milk. You're able to start seeing a little bit of the milk breaking down. You have a couple of like broken bubbles here along the edge, which is common. That'll happen with pretty much any sort of steamer you'll use. But for the most part, the bubbles are incredibly small, which is a very good sign. That means we've created like that really fine microfoam that you want out of a cafe grade latte. Additionally, if we grab our spoon and start pushing through, you can see we have a really nice thickly textured foam here. It's not too thick. Underneath you can see you still have all your like hot milk liquid for lack of a better word. And all in all, this is just, it's nicely structured. Like you can see how it, it sticks to the back of the spoon and kind of like drips off. I mean, I personally find this kind of appealing, but you know, this looks like a very nice latte. And drinking wise, Nice warm temperature, very drinkable, very tasty, very sweet, just creamy, foamy, like milky goodness. However, I think there is one more thing we should do here today. And that is compare this to what we talked about earlier, which is a handheld frother, because I think those handheld frothers are much more common. In fact, you probably have one or have had one or have tried one in the past. They're interesting to use. And while they do froth milk, I think if you are looking for something of a higher quality beverage, they're not necessarily the way you wanna go, but that's easy to say not as easy to back up. So I'm gonna make a latte with our Bellman once more. I'm also gonna make a latte with a handheld frother and we're gonna look at the two different types of milk texture that you can achieve. Here is the game plan for this last half just to make it as even as possible. We have two pretty much identical setups, a smaller pitcher with milk in it that we will be steaming in and then a larger pitcher that we will be transferring into and then using to pour with. I have whole milk for both of them. I'm gonna go get two identical shots of espresso ready for both of them. I even have like the same cup here. <laughs> However, for one of these, the very first one, I'm going to use the Bellman as we did before. I'm going to steam it. I'm going to transfer it into a secondary pitcher and then I'm going to pour in it. Now, directly afterwards, I'm going to use the hand frother method, which means we are going to heat up our milk separately and then going to pour it into my pitcher. I'm going to use our 
little hand frother here. Afterward, we will transfer into our second pitcher, pour our latte, and then we'll talk about the two types of textural milk that we've created, and ideally why one is better than the other. Okay, well, all of this is gonna happen very, very quickly, so I will be right back with our lattes. <laughs> This is our milk from the Bellman steam maker. Now we have our separately warmed milk. Once more, we pitcher transfer and it's time to pour. Spillage aside, uh, we have a pretty noticeable difference. Now assuredly our designs look very, very different. And there's a reason for this and it all has to do with the quality of milk that we were able to create. Now the Bellman latte has sat for a little bit longer. So you're starting to see a little bit of breakdown around the edges of our design here. You're starting to see some of those air bubbles like rise to the top and start to pop. That's gonna happen with any design. But I want you to note the size of the air bubbles. Those are very, very small, which is what we want. That means we've created a really nice microfoam rather than something that's kind of like blobby and larger and not a very nice like texture like you would get if you were getting a drink in a cafe. Now the hand frother one has not sat for quite as long, but you are starting to see some of those similar bubbles right rising to the top, and they are larger bubbles, which means we have a lower quality milk. Larger bubbles that are rising to the top faster and popping faster means that we haven't fully integrated that air throughout the rest of our milk. Another thing I do wanna note is the very big difference between the quality of foam that we have sitting on top of our two drinks. And to do that, I have a spoon. This one first. You're able to see there's a pretty big color difference between what we have around the design area and also what we have back here. My guess is that what is back here is actually are gonna be mostly just like hot milk. I don't think we have a lot of foam here. And no, indeed, there's not a ton of foam. Now, the foam we do have is mostly back here, kind of on top, floating with the design, and it does stick to the back of the spoon a little bit, like, that's nice, but it's mostly just hot milk, which means, first of all, we haven't incorporated a ton of air, and second of all, it means the air wasn't able to be incorporated throughout the entirety of the drink. Compare that to the Bellman one, which already you have that beautiful, thick layer of foam on top. That foam is going to cling to the back of the spoon Spoon. It just looks tasty, it looks creamy and fluffy and all the good things. Now, your mileage on hand frothers, person to person, might change a little bit. It depends on what quality hand frother you're using. It depends on what sort of milk you're using. It depends on a lot of stuff. But generally with hand frothers, you will have milk that is not fully incorporated. You will have milk that is too thin on the bottom, like what we saw here. Or you'll have milk that is just like far too thick. It has way too much air in it and it's kind of like a like a cakey, like it, it just feels like a cloud, but not in a good way. That's generally what you're gonna see happen with hand frothers and it's why I don't always recommend them to people because they're like, it kind of works, but like it kind of doesn't at the same time. However, something like the Bellman is a pretty good recreation of a commercial steam wand. The amount of steam pressure that you're able to build up on your stovetop is, is pretty phenomenal, which makes this a really good substitution. Yes, it's a little bit clunkier, like you have to have a stovetop, you have to be willing to put in the amount of time it takes for that thing to like build up the steam pressure and heat up and all of those things. You have to be willing to clean it up afterwards Words, but that being said, if you yourself are looking to learn latte art or upgrade your home setup, this is kind of the route I would go if I'm being totally honest. Now, I'm not sponsored by Bellman. It's something that I purchased with my own money and I like using and recommending to people. Uh, and I wanted to share it here today because I still to this day get tons of DMs of how do I make lattes at home. There are many, many substitutions to espresso machines. You can find so many different things to fit whatever your needs are, whether it's, you know, something that's like hand operated, like the flare, or whether it's just a mocha pot or any of those things. But the milk part, that really is the tricky part because you're putting two ounces of espresso in a latte, but you're putting like six to 10 ounces of milk in your latte. So that's, that is a very, very important component. And I think it should be treated with the same amount of care that we treat our espresso substitutions. Moral of the story though is I like the bell. I think it's pretty nifty. I think it does a really good job at what it does. And I think for a hundred dollars, if you are looking to make lattes at home on a very regular basis, if perhaps you want to start practicing latte art, I think it's honestly the way to go. It's a really great introduction to all things milk related. And let's say you get really good at using that. When you upgrade eventually perhaps to a regular espresso machine with a regular steam wand, you're going to be really set. You're going to have a very good understanding about how milk steaming works and good foam quality and all those things. Anyways, I hope this was fun for you. <laughs> I hope this was educational in some way or another, and I had a lot of fun today. Now, I'm gonna go drink my very delicious latte that I have here, and I am perchance going to probably not drink that one. <laughs>
<laughs> there is lots of things in the description below. As I mentioned before, we have a new merch drop happening very soon, which I'm very excited about. So more information about that below, lots of links to things. I sometimes forget what I put links to in the bottom. <sighs> I don't even script these things. That's the sad part. This is just me unfiltered spilling things, uh, which is a very regular occurrence in this house. Whatever I was saying, there are links below. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. I'm gonna go drink my latte, what is left of it at least. I will see you next time. Bye everyone. <laughs>